So we are continuing on with finding inverses of a matrix. So far we've seen examples of how to find an inverse. The first one we did it by just using the property. The second one we did it by using the actual steps or the row reducing format. We've also tried it with a third example, but that shows us that not every matrix has an inverse. But something that we haven't done it with yet is something that was larger than a two by two square matrix. So I have another example here where this one is a three by three. So all we need to do is find the inverse of this guy. Well, we know the first steps are to set it up to an identity matrix. And then after that, what we need to do is we need to row reduce it. So let me get it set up here for you. So our inverse on the left, the identity inverse on the right, and basically we want to row reduce them until we get them flip-flopped, where we get the identity inverse on the left, and then whatever we get on the right is our inverse matrix. So I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can row reduce this all on your own. Okay, so the very first thing that I want to do is get a one here in the top left. And lucky for us, that's already done. Okay. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to get a zero right below it. Well, the easiest way for me to get a zero where that three is, is to take row one times a negative three and add it to row two. And of course, that's going to be replaced in row two. So let me do my scratch work up here. So this is negative three. Two times negative three gives me negative six. Negative one times negative three is positive three, a negative three, zero, and zero. So I'm adding this row and this row, and that's going to become my new row two. So I get a zero here, a negative one there, a six, negative three, one, and zero. And I also can actually get a zero where this two is at the same time using the same method. So I take a row one times a negative two and add that to row three. I'm going to replace that in row three. So let me do a new scratch work here. One times negative two is negative two, negative four, positive two, negative two, zero, and zero. And so when I add this row and this row, that becomes my new row three. So zero, zero, five, negative two, zero, one. And that even helps me out because my next step would be to get a zero right here. So that's actually already done. Okay, after that, I want to get a one where this five is. So I take my row three and I divide it by five and that goes into row three. So my row one and my row two stay the same. So zero, zero, one, negative two divided by five is negative two fifths. Zero divided by anything is zero and one divided by five is one fifth. And again, I get fractions, but unfortunately, that is unavoidable. A lot of times when we do inverse matrices, we have fractions in our answer. Okay, the next thing that I want to do is to get a zero where this six is. So I have to partner that up with row three. So I'm going to take row three times negative six, and I'm going to add that to row two. And that becomes my new row two. So let me do that scratch work down here. Zero, zero, negative six. Negative two fifths times negative six gives me positive 12 fifths. Zero and negative six fifths. So I'm adding these two rows. Okay, so my row one stays the same. My row two, zero plus zero is zero. Negative one plus zero is negative one. Six plus six cancels itself out. 
negative 3 and 12 fifths. So negative 3 is negative 15 fifths plus 12 gives me a negative 3 fifths. 1 plus 0 is 1, and 0 minus 6 fifths gives me a negative 6 fifths. My row 3 stays the same. And the last step in this row is to change this negative 1 into a positive 1. And so I do that by either multiplying or dividing by a negative 1. And so, basically, I'm just going to change all the signs in my second row. So it gives me positive 3 fifths, negative 1, and positive 6 fifths. All right, two more steps to get zeros where these two places are. It doesn't matter which one first. So I'm going to do this one. It's a little easier. All I need to do is add my row 1 plus my row 2, and that becomes my row 2. So 1 plus 0 is 0. 2 plus 0 is 2. Negative 1 plus 1 gives me 0. 1 minus 2 fifths gives me a 3 fifths. 0 plus 0 is 0, and 0 plus 1 fifth is a 1 fifth. Okay, and last but not least, I need to get a 0 where this 2 is. And so I need to do that by taking row 2 times a negative row 2 and adding it to row 1. And of course, that gets replaced with row 1. So let me do my scratch work in here. 0, negative 2, 0, negative, see, 6 fifths, positive 2, and negative 12 fifths. So I'm adding that guy and that guy. So it gives me 0, 1, 0. 3 minus 6 fifths gives me a negative 3 fifths. 0 plus 2 gives me 0. And 1 fifth minus 12 fifths gives me a negative 11 fifths. And if I copy everything else down, that gives me my final answer of my inverse here on the right. And so... My A inverse is negative 3 fifths, 2, negative 11 fifths, 3 fifths, negative 1, 6 fifths, negative 2 fifths, 0, and 1 fifth. And you can always confirm your answer by taking A times A inverse to make sure you end up with the identity matrix, and of course to do it the opposite way around. Or, again, if you hold on to the last video here, I'll show you how to double check these on your graphing calculator. So at this point, we've learned what's the purpose of inverse matrices. We know that we need them because they have to hold true for this inverse property. And we figured out how to find them, but we haven't really figured out what purpose do they use us in this whole matrix application thing. And so that's what we're going to be doing in the next video is we're going to be learning how to utilize matrix inverses to solve some systems of equations.